Good afternoon. Uh, first off, I want to thank uh, the members of the State Assembly, uh, all the members, uh, Republican and Democrat alike, uh, having served that body. Uh, I know what a lengthy debate is about, although I don't think I ever had a debate as long as I've as they've had over the last couple of days. Uh, hopefully all of them have got a chance to catch a little sleep uh, since then, but I want to make it uh, abundantly clear I thank all, uh, not only those who supported my bill, uh, the budget repair bill, but also those who were of opposition to it because they're doing what we're hoping Senate Democrats will do. Uh, they're actually showing up and having a vote. Because ultimately, uh, when I served in the legislature, that was the most important part of my job was to vote on behalf of the constituents I served in my district. Uh, and that's the expectation, expectation I think all of us have of all the members, Republican or Democrat alike, in, from any part of the state of Wisconsin. Uh, today uh, was a, a particularly good day for me because I get to get out of the gap. Uh, I spent some time traveling the state. I started out this morning in Kenosha. Uh, I went up to Green Bay. And I just came back from Winelander. And the reason I went to those places, got a great response, even coming kind of, uh, in and out from folks, talked to, uh, uh, in fact, it was interesting. I had a guy in Kenosha tell me he was a union guy, but he supported what we're doing. Up at Rhinelander, I had a government worker, a county worker, who told me I didn't really work for the government. He thought we were doing the right thing to get this budget intact. But the most important reason I was there was to ask in Kenosha for Senator Wirch, in Green Bay for Senator Hansen, and in Rhinelander for Senator Holper, uh, to do for, for them to come back and do their job. And ultimately to make an appeal to the constituents in their districts, in the districts of all the others who are missing in action to come back and do the job they were elected to do. Uh, I think it's plain and simple. Overwhelmingly, people across the state, no matter what their opinion for or against or somewhere in between on the budget repair bill, I think overwhelmingly, the sentiment out there is the place that you have that debate is right here in the Capitol. So again, I'm calling on, I'm asking, I'm pleading with people all across the state to call their state senators and ask them to come back to the Capitol and vote on this bill. Now, for them, I think there's a way, a path to come back. You see, two weeks ago, just back here in my office, I sat down with Senator Mark Miller, and I sat down with Representative Peter Barker, and before I introduced our budget repair bill to the public, I walked them through what was in that bill. In fact, I gave them a detailed memo that we put out later publicly, but I gave it to them in advance that walked them through piece by piece what was in this bill. As you can imagine, they weren't necessarily supportive of all the pieces. Now, that's understandable. I'm not asking for everybody to, to be in universal agreement with them, but I am asking for people to have the debate, to have the discussion, ultimately to have the vote here in the Capitol. Now, days after I gave that advance notice uh, to the Democrat leaders in the Assembly and the Senate, uh, 14 state Senate Democrats walked out of the state, uh, walked out of the Capitol, I should say, and then walked out of the state. And at the time, if you recall, the reason they said they were doing it was because they thought the pace was moving too quickly. The public didn't have an opportunity to see what was in this bill, to understand what was in this bill. Well, let's go over what's happened the last two weeks. We had a week and a half ago, the Joint Finance Committee had a public hearing on this, 17 and a half hours. In all my time in the legislature, I can't recall a time that came close to 17 and a half hours of testimony. Over the last several days, we had day after day after day of debate on the budget repair bill in the state assembly. More debate than I can ever recall on a single piece of legislation. If the goal of the state senate was to ensure that people all across this state understood what was in this bill, I think they've succeeded. I think there's not a person out there, at least anybody who's been paying attention to all of you in the news, who doesn't understand what's happening here in the state capitol and what's inside this bill. Now again, people from across the spectrum, from across the state have different opinions, and I respect that, and I appreciate the fact that those who feel passionately have been civil, and have been straightforward about their beliefs both for and against this bill. But I don't think anyone can say that the Senate Democrats have succeeded in giving us the time for everyone in this state to understand what's in this bill. To me, that's a clear signal that now is the time to come forward. Now is the time to come back. And what they said was they wanted more time to understand what's in the bill. They have. The details are out there, the facts are on the table, and the facts are clear. We need to make a commitment to the future. Because if we don't, if those Senate Democrats don't come back to vote, we pass on not only dire consequences today, we pass on those dire consequences by failing to make a commitment to the future to our children and their children for generations to come. And we've already started to see that. In the past couple days, uh, we have seen across the state of Wisconsin that school districts have sent out notices 
uh, forewarning uh, that layoffs might be on the way in those school districts. The people from one end of the state to the back to Senate, majority leader's wife was one of those who got one of those notices. <coughs> now those notices are going out not because of what we're saying today, but because they're anticipating the reductions in state aid that will be in the state next state budget. Now that's not an illogical assumption because not only have we talked about it, governors all across the country have talked about it, from one end of the country to the other. Even de governors and, and Democrat or Democrat governors in states have pointed out that they're going to have to cut aid for schools and local governments. The difference is, well, we want to be unique, well, we want to lead the way, well, we want to be forthright in offering a better alternative to what other states are offering, is that here in Wisconsin, we want to give our schools and our local governments the ability to offset those cuts, those reductions in state aid, and in turn give them the tools to make up that amount in terms of savings they can get uh, in the school districts, in their counties, their towns, and villages all across the state. Those are the facts, and they're simple. The $1.44 billion worth of savings will exceed the amount of reductions in aid to local governments in the next state budget. That's really what's at stake here. Um, the fact of the matter is, if people don't want those layoffs to go forward, the best thing to do is have those state senators come forward and give us the ability to have a vote, and then assuming that vote passes, that's one more tool that those local governments can have to offset those reductions. In the same regard, two weeks ago when I first stood here and announced our budget repair bill, I told you that $30 million of savings in this year's budget was the equivalent of 1,500 positions in state government, and the $300 million worth of savings in the biennial was the equivalent of five to 6,000 state workers and an equivalent number of state workers, or local government workers as well. Again, the facts are clear. If we want to avoid the layoffs that will eventually come at both the state and the local level, the only way to achieve that the clearest, easiest way to achieve that is for those 14 state senators to come back to Wisconsin. Now, you know, I traveled around the state today, but I've, I've been talking to folks. In fact, I actually had an interesting email exchange earlier today with one of my uh, my old high school classmates who said he understood why he was doing this. He's actually uh, married to someone who works in government. And he said, well, it wasn't going to be easy for him. He understood uh, why we were going ahead and trying to do this to balance the budget. But he said, like a lot of people in this state, they're just kind of growing tired of this. They're ready to move on. And I can understand it. I'm ready too. I look back at the first four or five weeks we've been in office, and I think of the remarkable things we've done in this state. We have fundamentally turned this state around even in a month, month and a half time. And the beauty of it is, we've done it in many regards in a bipartisan way. The things we put forward to show that Wisconsin is open for business, to put more people back to work, to get the people to stay working again, are things that time and time again in our special session in the first four or five weeks in office are things where not only Republicans voted for, but many of the same Senate Democrats who are out of the state right now joined us and voted for. I think there's a growing sentiment across the state that people want to get back to that. We want to get back to that time where we start to move the state forward and we can do it together in a path that, that gets us out of all this tension and passion. The easiest way to do that now that the Assembly has passed that bill is for the members of the state senate to return home to do the job they are elected to do and then we can get on with the rest of the state's business because it's going to happen it's going to happen day in and day out we're going to continue to see bills come up in the assembly and the senate and i think it's only right that those 14 members of the state uh, senate do what they were elected to do and come back home and vote so that'll take a couple of questions governor you said that uh these layoffs and districts i mean you said that the, the country or the savings you're going to treat the austerity measures will offset cuts in state aid do these guys making mistakes I think layoff notices for next school year shouldn't they be able to keep everybody if what you're saying is true about the uh, savings they're going to have? No, in their case, they're anticipating the cuts uh, based on assumptions just like school districts all across the country. They don't see a bill passed, and so until a bill's passed and actually gives them the savings, I think they have to assume that those, uh, uh, those employees are at risk. I mean, I think your question actually under, uh, ultimately lifts up the point, the very argument I'm making, which is if we fail to do this, if the 14 members of the state senate decide for the next two years they're not going to show up and they're not going to allow a vote uh, on this measure or anything else like that, what happens is the alternative is the state budget is still going to have reductions in there because we've got a $3.6 billion budget deficit and there aren't a whole lot of options on the table when the, the overwhelming majority of the general fund goes to aid the local governments. You can't make up a $3.6 billion budget deficit unless you reduce the amount of state aid that goes to local government. And again, that's not a novel concept. That's happening in almost every state across the country. 
The difference is what's novel about Wisconsin, where we're going to be a leader when it comes to fiscal reform, just like Tommy Thompson was a leader when it came to welfare reform and education reform back in the 90s, is we're going to actually be different than other states where we give those local governments the tools, but they can't count on us until this measure passes and they actually see the impact. So are you saying if the bill passes, those teachers will not ultimately be laid off? In, in their case, what they're assuming, you know, I believe, and it, again, it didn't come from us, it came from Wisconsin Association of School Boards memo, as I understand, is what's driving this. They're anticipating uh, somewhere up to $900 million worth of reductions. Uh, we have pointed out time and time again this week that the amount, not just overall for governments, but by category, by schools, by municipalities, by counties, by technical schools, by special districts, in every one of those categories, the amount of savings that we give through this budget repair bill will be greater in savings than the amount we will reduce in each of those categories when it comes to state aids. Uh, they're assuming that the aid cuts are happening and they don't get the relief in terms of the layoffs. So by and large, now I can't tell in every district down to every person, I don't think that's realistic to expect that I could count for every single one, but I can tell you in mass, the reason they're talking about these mornings is because they're assuming they're going to lose this amount of aid and they're not going to be able to make it up. Our budget repair bill, bill gives them the tools to be able to make it up. Mary? Governor, could you point that Well, the layoffs that we've talked about up until now, the fifteen hundred, are directly tied to the thirty million dollars worth of savings uh, we achieved in this budget repair bill by starting uh, the pension and health care contribution effective April one. If we don't get that, we lose thirty million. That's the equivalent of one hundred or uh, fifteen hundred, uh, one thousand five hundred uh, positions, which ultimately we have to do layoff. If we don't get the one hundred sixty-five million. Uh, that's an even larger question. That's an even larger problem. And again, my hope is we have talked about realistically and we need to have that done by the end of the weekend. It, it, it appears as though we could push it no later than Tuesday. Again, I'm an optimist. Uh, my belief is, and why I went around the state today in those Senate districts, is I ultimately believe uh, that when push comes to shove, maybe not all, but I think a good number of those 14 state senators um, put their districts and their state ahead of their party or any other political affiliation. And they ultimately know that the alternatives, if they don't come back and vote, uh, the alternatives are too dire and they don't want to see that happen. And, and that's why we're pushing this. We, we believe this is the right thing to do to fix the budget now, and it's the right thing to do to make sure we fix the budget long term. Governor, right. Governor you said earlier in the week that <clears throat> if this bill didn't pass, next week you'd start issuing layoff notices to state employees. When will that start and what jobs will be targeted? Yeah, for us, um, we're in no rush to do that because I've talked about before, you know, one of the toughest things I've ever had to do as county executive before I was governor uh, was to consider layoffs. Because it's not just laying off numbers, you're laying off real people who have real families at a time when we obviously have a, a, a critical uh, gap in our economy. And so I don't want anybody to lay off, whether in the government or in the private sector. My job is to help it make it easier for more people to go to work in this state. And so we're under no rush. We're, we don't, this is not something we relish. In the end, I'm hoping uh, that we can find, come to some reasonable uh, accommodation that gets us to the point where we can have a vote and ultimately make sure that we can avoid massive layoffs. Uh, but for us, again, the savings that I mentioned, the $30 million of savings was based on the assumption that the pension and health care contributions, minus as they are, would start effective April 1. The 1,500 number I've talked about for the past two weeks is based on the same assumption as if you don't have those savings, well, that's the equivalent of 1,500 people being laid off by April 1st. And again, if we don't see the Senate come back, um, probably by the end of next week sometime, we'll have to start working with our agencies in uh, preparing those. Take so, one more question. Sure. Governor, are you going to try to clear this building Not tomorrow here. night? I'm going to ask Dave from her. You've asked one uh, almost every single day, and I've answered it. So Thank you. Uh, what do you what, can you talk about the steps you or the police might take to limit protesters in the building beginning perhaps tonight? And then also, what have your discussions recently been like with the Senate uh, Democrats, both, if you've talked to any and Republicans as well, since the bill? Uh, I haven't talked to any uh, any members of the Senate uh, since the bill passed. Uh, obviously, I was hoping, uh, if I was lucky, maybe I'd see Bob Warch, Dave Hansen, or Jim Holpern somewhere today in their districts. Uh, and, and certainly would have loved to have a talk with them there. Um, and I mean that earnestly. I'd love to have a talk and find out you know, how we can make the case to come back. Uh, but over the weekend, I'm hoping to reach out to talk to lawmakers and see if there's a way we can convince folks to come back and, and take a vote. Because again, I think people in the state 
are tired, they, they, they're, they're ready to move forward, and I certainly hope the state senators are as well. As far as the police, that's something, there's no efforts tonight. I think that uh, there's an interest by the Capitol Police uh, by the end of the weekend uh, to consider start going back to normal uh, business hours in the Capitol. The State Assembly has completed its work, the State Senate wouldn't be in until next week, um, and that, again, is going to be left up to the Capitol Police to determine that.